Hello, what's up everyone? So this is, you know, Cheerio. I uh, this is gonna be a little bit of scuffed because I didn't have that much time to prepare for this. I've had a really busy last few days since the patch came out, so I I wanted to do this a long time, but I legit had like a full day of like lectures and studying and projects and assignments and stuff like that because I kind of joined in uni late for because I'm dumb basically. Uni started a, like a week for a week and I had no idea like I just didn't know, so I I had, I had to catch up. But I'd love to catch up to do this week. But regardless, you don't want to hear about that. You want to hear about the patch. Patch came out. A lot of cool stuff happening. Well, I'll talk about the god later on, because it's probably going to take a little bit more time. So I guess this video will actually be longer than 40 minutes. I fucked up. But I should, I'll try to, like, speed run the stuff that's like, well, I mean, you can just read Yanis. His 3 is slower, right? Like, like his, pa like, he he's he's just slower. I guess let's move speed from his portals and his 3. So, you know, there's that. Um, Shikumi got nervous. Shikumi is doing really well in solo and in jungle. He's really good with Boombas. He's a pretty solid jungler, you can kind of pick any game. So they nerfed the damage on his 1, the base damage, and they nerfed the base damage on his 2 from the final hit, that 1 that actually stuns. So, I mean, that's fine. I don't think he needed, like, a big nerf. So 10 damage on his 1, 10 damage on his 2 overall. You know, it's okay. It doesn't, do, doesn't hurt him that much. He'll be fine. Guan needed a nerf once. I always thought Guan is a pretty broken god, regardless of healing or not. I thought his 3 is OP, his ult is OP. In my opinion... His healing is always going to make him, like, somewhat annoying to deal with all the time. If you don't have, like, perfect fights. But I still think, like, his ult is so broken that people should have been playing it more. I'm glad he's getting nerfed. He's kind of a boring god to play against. Because, yeah, you know, healing, blah, blah, blah. Boring. Uh, he's not a very fun character. So, you know, he's, he, the nerfing his cooldowns. Because you know, we don't actually have to be forced to build cooldown on him. But people kind of stopped. You didn't have to build cooldown on him anymore. People still did most of the time. But you didn't actually have to. And now, like, you like, okay, you guys should build cooldown on him. Now his 2 and his 1, they're both uh, 2 seconds longer. Afro, fuck Afro, let's nerf Afro, boring character, no one wants to play against Afro, let's be honest. Afro's fun to play, don't get me wrong, no one wants to play against Afro, it makes the game incredibly hard to play if you don't have like perfect coordination with your team. Um, so I do not mind seeing Afro get nerfed, I'll be honest. Um, rip Dodas, nah Dodas won't care, Dodas will play it, he does not care. Apollo's been getting a lot of plays since, like, right before Worlds. Like, everyone's been playing him. He's been playing in jungle a lot in ranked. Been kind of, you can kind of just pick him any games, but pushing his OP. Well, it's not OP, but it's a lot better this, this season than last season. So they were reverting the buff they did to his 2, like, a while ago, where, like, they increased the protection again. Berserkers got buffed, and then he was really annoying to deal with. With Berserkers and his 2 stacking up, he was pretty tanky. He was, like, well, just winning 1v1s against all junglers and ADCs, so... I think that nerf is fine. He still has the same power, which is his old mid late game. Like just the fact that if you ever start have a if you have a good engage as a team and Apollo's old thing, like you just win the fight. Like how do you how, how do you even like how do you carry survive that? You know, it's, it's so hard to deal with. But obviously, if you're losing, then it, you know Apollo ulting doesn't do that much. But there's always a way to get back in the game. Also, this is the bonus patch. I wish you'd have verified that, said that at the start. I'll, I'll I'll say it after this. Increase shield of Nemesis. I don't even think Nemesis that good. Honestly, I don't think she needs a nerf, but I don't mind them getting nerfed. Like, it's, it's, I think it's just 80 HP, right? But it's technically 160 because, uh, the shield is 80% and then you heal for 100% of the damage you take. So if you, the sh you absorb 80 and you heal 80, so it's technically 160 HP. This is a pretty big nerf, in my opinion. Is it gonna make the character shit? No, is it gonna make it worse? Yes, obviously. Like, I don't think she needs a nerf. I mean, she's probably just dominate strength. People go crit and you kind of just kill everyone. I understand that. So, I don't mind. Nem is also boring. So, I don't mind. I don't know if that's bad to say, like, boring gods get nerfed. I don't care. But it's kind of the truth. So, there's there's gonna be, uh, these notes gonna be, these pat this patch is gonna be updated on my April 6th, which is four days from when I'm recording. Probably three days when I upload it. So, yeah. Um,. Let's move on to like the real patch, okay? We'll get to the we'll, we'll get to Gilgamesh. Is that how you say his name? Gilgamesh, yeah. Uh, at the end of this, I'll probably put timestamps if you want to like skip through or whatever. Blah 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 blah. Oh, they added vines. Okay, I need to read this because I didn't actually see it. I heard about it, but I didn't actually know. Um. I know they changed the map. You should go look at the map. It looks really cool now. Well, some people don't like it. I kind of, I kind of like it. I like new changes, anyways. Uh, oh, it's, it's supposed to help. It's supposed to be a nerf for jungle. It is harder to gank. 
it's made specifically for ranked if i'm not correct i mean obviously it's going to be in comp but it's made to because like ganking in ranked is really op uh so it's like kind of like persephone or terra wall a uh, terra three or persephone ult where you have to like hit the vines multiple times to be able to walk through the other sides at least one of 15 minutes they're supposed to just be like an early game thing early i don't even say mid game just early game it takes 15 minutes you're about to get into mid game and there are oracles mid camps and um like both mid camps basically uh the left ones and the right ones you can see them here if you don't know where they are one two one two one two i don't know how much i like them i i want to see them oh that's what they look like okay i don't know wait Can, do, they, do you kill them do they respawn walls respawn they didn't oh no way dude that's gonna be annoying wait how many hits is it i think i need to actually look at this I, if it's too many hits it's kind of annoying like uh, I mean, it helps dueling. I don't mind these two, so dueling can com stop complaining, you know, because they love com to complain. This one, it's fine. But the this one, that's going to be annoying as fuck, dude. The, the solo side ones. You path a lot as a jungler there. If I'm going to try to invade it back, I'm going to have to sit down and auto this thing, like, what, three times, I'm guessing? I don't actually know. I should have probably looked into how many autos, because it doesn't say you can be so by base size only. Number of hits, not damage, but it doesn't say how many hits, so I don't actually know. Also, I'm assuming both people can kill it, not just like, it's not like I can kill his and he can kill mine. I'm assuming we both can kill each other's. Uh, sorry, I don't have that much info on this. Maybe you guys let me know in the comments. I'll probably look into it before I go to sleep tonight. Maybe tomorrow because I'm pretty tired. Um, But yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, let's go to the items. Um... Finally, they finally fixed that still proking on immune junk camps. Like, you could stand outside of a... As it mostly... As it, obviously, you could stand outside of a camp's range and just hit it and you'd be healing. And that was whatever on death soul, but on death's embrace was kind of OP because it heals you for, like, 3% of your HP, I think. And that's kind of, you know, adds up a lot. And they're buffing this one because people didn't buy it that much, I feel like. Uh, or ever, really. Uh, so they gave it like 10 base attack speed and 5% base crit and they this one like where you get like stacks you get attack speed and now the uh you get crit as well they, they just buffed it pr pretty much like not not much um to think about so um i i don't think you'll see it that often still but maybe i mean it's probably made for like uh like arena and stuff more more than it's made for conquest to be honest so um wait ornate arrow leader scout wait am i do i have this right wait okay i'm gonna i'm gonna do something I, f I i don't know the names of the hunter items to be honest so i'm gonna like i know so wh so which one is this ornate arrow Wait, wait, am I dumb? Which one is this? Glided arrow. Oh, this is the one that no one bought, right? Oh, yeah, okay, never mind. Yeah, no one's buying this still. I don't think so. It's the gold one. Uh, people will probably still buy the, the Leather's Cow. Is that what it's called? Leather's Cow? I think so. Hunter's Cow. Yeah, I mean, the, the first one is... Uh... Yeah, I think people are still gonna buy this. Over this, mm. yeah, pretty sure you buy this. This is like, I I don't know who the fuck you buy this on. Three hundred HP, like, who, I guess maybe no. Hmm, uh, I don't know. I, I I still think you buy the Death and Base when you buy this one, but I mean I I could be wrong. I I haven't looked that much into it to be honest. So, so everyone saying Sentinel is getting nerfed. But some people say it's actually a buff. Um, I would lean more toward it. It's like more useful for the support, which makes it a buff. Because I think it was pretty hard to actually give use to this for your team, like your allies. That I think this, this is just a straight up buff, honestly. I, I Yeah, Sentinel's Embrace, in my opinion, is a buff. It's not like, I don't know, uh, I don't think it's broken or anything, but... 
I think it's just better now. Uh, for yourself, and I don't think I honestly don't think Carrie's even had that much problem surviving right now. And with the meta, with like people building warriors axe and some some carries building sentinels embrace, believe it or not. So I don't mind this. Uh, I think supports are actually pretty weak. It felt like like that's a lot of cities in the game, anyways. Maybe not. I think I do I think his supports actually dominate casual so much. This is so random, but they just dominate casual so. Uh, it's kind of hard to like actually buff them without making sure they're like OP in arena and stuff like that. Compassion, that's like the item you build from Benevolence. It's a little buff, I actually like it. I, this item could be really cool. I, I really like the idea of it, which is like absorbing damage, like taking damage for your team or whatever. It's a very cool item and I really hope it ends up working. And seeing people build it and doing like cool stuff with it, but it's, I, I know it's hard obviously, so make an item like that work but i'm glad that they're buffing it like not too much like i really think that the passive or range need to be buffed because it was it wasn't that big uh just making it more tanky hp5 you know it's always nice it helps a lot late game maybe so considering building an item like that if you want like oh, i want a little bit of sustain i could build compassion you know i don't think that's ever gonna happen i think the problem might be benevolence maybe instead of sentinel like maybe just buff benevolence a little bit more but yeah, maybe, maybe. I mean, X was OP. It wasn't OP. Like, uh, Sunny's not OP for solo. It was OP for mid laners. Like, they would just buy this item, like, fourth or fifth item, and they'd just be way too tanky. And it's like, why is this a thing? Like, this shouldn't, this shouldn't be happening, you know? So I'm glad, I'm glad that they basically made it for tanks. It was like, okay, if you want to reach this cap, you need 400 total protection, which is like, you have 200 physical, 200 magical, or like, 250 physical, 150 magical. You know, total has to be 40. That's good. So mages could stop buying that shit and ruining it for everyone. That's great. Because then they, they actually want to buff this item. Because I don't think it's that good for actually in solo. So now they can actually buff this item without buffing it for mid. So that's that's really good. It's all like just like an overall buff for tanks. By the way, if you if you can see that you can actually reach 14% of enemies' current HP. 200 400 total protection is not that hard to reach for a six item build. So you could actually go full tank, buy this item, and then you'd have that effect, like that would be actually pretty pretty decent, uh, like, uh, damage-wise. If you actually go full tank, which is the whole point of this item, right? Uh, buffing blue, bluestone starter. I think bluestone's actually okay. I think it made a lot of gods in solo, like, like, it made Arthur okay. It made Wukong pretty good. I think you could play Vimana with bluestone. But, you know, a little buff is fine. I think it's always fun to buff the, you know, the aggressive items. Even though I think with blue stone you actually play aggressive, you clear the wave and run away. But you know, I, I think you ha it's more fun to be able to do damage, I guess. And the 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 base damage from blue stone like was actually like negligible, uh, like from the the upgrade. So I'm glad that they buffed that. Twenty five was like nothing. So oh, finally, this item cooldown was so long, ten minutes is like, dude. You could, you could like not like like it was way too long. You'd use it once, and you just basically okay. I need to sell this item. I'm not I'm not not gonna get to use it again. So I I really like that six minutes. It actually gives you like a a decision to make. Do I want to keep this item for potentially like the next FG? I won't have it. Like oh you, you use that five. You lost FG. You're not gonna have it for, for Phoenix defense. Are you gonna sell it? I think most people will just like yeah. I'm just gonna sell. It. I'm not gonna end up having this item and potentially lose the game. But like, oh, maybe we can hold without it. I could save it for next FG. I still don't know how good this item is. It could come in clutch sometimes, maybe against someone like Alquang or Thanatos or Kali. Like that would be pretty annoying. Someone that really needs to get a kill to like get out or heal up and stuff like that. Maybe that buying that little bit of time could be like what saves the game. So it's pretty cool. I don't mind it. Uh, I think I, I, item like this, I would love to see buffed in general. Even if it becomes OP, then you can change it. It'll be really annoying for Assassin, so that, like, hits me, kind of. But it's a cool, cool uh, idea, and I would like to see it work. So, they fixed an issue with uh, Mirrodin. Blah, 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 whatever. Achilles buff again. Ugh, why does this god keep getting buffed? I know he does, he's not getting played that much, but that god is, like... <laughs> When you keep when you get when he gets buffed, he just get he just gets played in every role. You just end up playing him in jungle, you end up playing him in solo, you end up playing him in support, and he just becomes boring and you play him against him every game in ranked. I don't think it's gonna make him OP by the way. I don't think that's how everyone's gonna play Achilles. But as soon every time Achilles gets buffed, I he gets picked so much more often in ranked because like, oh, 
Achilles, he exists. You know, yeah, he is actually a pretty cool god. So I don't mind it that much, but you know, he, he, that's why he gets buffed so often, and then they like have to nerf him eventually. But whatever. If anything, I think it's way cool to buff his three over the one. The one is just a boring ability. The three is like where most of the fun happened with this character. This is the first time I think they've they've buffed his old uh, damage taken. Like they reduced it. This is the first time I think they've done it. So I'm kind of excited to see if that actually. But I think because I did definitely did feel if you get like two executes, you start like. You just start dying so much quicker because you're taking 20% more damage, so. Please don't tell me you buffed Bacchus. Don't buff Bacchus. Oh, no, they buffed Bacchus. I... Dude, you get... do you guys remember the beginning of last season when Bacchus was so OP that he was just getting... being, like, first picked in SPL? That wasn't fun. That god is unkillable. Like, when he... Dude, if this god gets ahead, he actually doesn't die. His one protection and his passive, which gives him, like, damage mitigation. I do not want to play against that as a jungler. When he, when Bacchus starts running at you and he's like soloing you and doesn't take any damage, I think mages hate playing against him more than me. But buff doesn't make him OP. Like don't worry, it's just forty more damage, which is uh twenty more damage. Sorry, I was like forty. There's no way it's forty. It's twenty more damage. I mean that helps him a lot at level one. Uh, I think I think it's probably just because he's not that strong in dual lane early game. They're trying to buff that a little bit. It's okay. The mana is whatever. I don't think he even. I don't even think he had mana problems anymore, but, you know, it's fine. Whatever. It's okay, he's not OP right now. Getting a buff is not going to make him OP. Like, it's maybe get get him a little bit more play, uh, which is which is not bad. I also think it's good to have, you know, supports right now in the meta. There's no supports that, like, punish mages like Hell or Hebo. Or maybe any mage. Like, there's no support that just goes on mages and, like, kills them, kind of. Like... I guess Terra used to be it, but she's not that good right now. Bacchus kind of fills that role. Ares doesn't really do that. Like, like Bacchus will just do the damage regardless of anything. Ares, you have to, you have to like make sure. And, like Bacchus is so brain that you just blink old, and you've done you you've done your job. And like you've done eighty percent of what you need to do in a team fight. If you actually manage to get that blink off and ult a mage and an assassin or a mage and a hunter, you've done your team. You, you've done your job in a team fight. Obviously, after that, you know, heading a good belly flop, maybe stunning someone, that's a bonus, showing your team. But I feel like 70 to 80% of the fight is just blink ulting the carries, and then you've done so much. Like, same with Terra, you know? With Ares, you get a blink hit change, you can ability, use your two, you know, stuff like that. You gotta, you gotta be, like, slippery with Ares. You can't just, like, walk in a straight line and die because it's so easy to kill you. Yorn buff on, I'm sure Nika is really happy about that right now. Yorm has been pretty shit, like, to be honest, for a while. I seriously did, did that nerf to him a long time ago, like, like I don't know, like, last June or something like that. It was a long time ago. Um, I'm, I'm glad he's getting buffed. I actually think Yorm is cool. Soul winners hate him because he, he went solo super hard. But I actually don't think there's any... I guess I guess Warrior's Blessing got removed, so... But people will just buy Sigil against you and you probably don't do any damage. Which is probably why I don't think he's going to get played at all. But I think I think this guy's actually a really cool mid laner, and I I hope Zero Zero brings him back this season because you know he's back in mid. But anyways, anyways, um, wait, what is that? His two? Yeah, it's his two. Okay, I was like I was talking about was consuming Bello. I used to kill him in this three. Cool. It's just like small buffs. I mean, this is actually a pretty big buff. Actually, that is not a small buff. That's four seconds taken. That's pretty nice. Also, Zero's max is his 3 in mid, so maybe, you know, maybe he sees this and he's like, hmm, maybe I'll play your mid again. Oh, Merlin nerf. Dead. I haven't seen a Merlin nerf uh, buff in so long. Like, in so long, like, maybe, like, more than a year. Like, he's, he's just got a nerf his whole, like, lifespan in Smite, <laughs> and he's suddenly getting buffed. I actually like that they're buffing the 2 in Fire Sense, because the Fire Sense is the least used hands, and I'm s that basically they're like, okay, you guys remember when Merlin used to shred objectives? He's he's doing it again. Four percent at all ranks. Decrease max tank from six to four. So over, this is sixteen instead of math, 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 math. Uh, wait, was it also sixteen? I think it was also sixteen. Was it fourteen? Dude, I can't do math right now. It's too late. Oh, they say it here. Thank you guys. Thank you. Fifteen to sixteen. Thank you so much. You get, they know I suck at math. <laughs> it's 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 a buff obviously because it takes less stacks as well. Uh, maybe next day buff is one in five stance, and maybe he'll be played more. Who knows? Okay, I was hoping they don't buff Neath. I don't really. Oh, they did buff Neath. I was hoping they don't buff Neath. I don't like Neath. 
needs counters junglers, but she also gets shit on by junglers. But you know, just cause that buff, then people pick Neath. It's not about the oneness, then people start ulting you more as a jungler, and I don't like that, so. Hopefully she's not played that much more. But Neath is a cool god. Neath is like um, one of the most popular gods in Smite. For whatever reason. I think it's just because she's a free to play character. Everyone just plays, starts playing Hunters, just looks at Neath and is like, oh, I'll play Neath. So I think it's fine. To, you know, a little buff. I don't think she'll be OP. I think the only thing would make. Actually, Neath is pretty underrated. I don't. I. But whenever I'm playing Assassin and I want. Like, oh, I see a Neath. It's like in my head, that's a free kill. So I say that she's underrated, but then I play against her and it's like, this god is so easy to kill. But I think it's also the people who play Neath. Like, if you're playing against Emily, to playing Neath, it's a lot different than playing against like anyone else playing Neath. And he he makes it really annoying to play against uh, a good Neath. All in buff. I hate it. I hate that character. The, I'm, the phase where Olin was OP, I think every fucking solo and jungler and support hated playing the game. Like, it's like you you, ha you just can't play around him if you don't have beads and if you don't have if you're not playing like Guano or Vamana or something early game you just can't gank him. And just he was just not fun to play against. But you know he hasn't all the major DCs haven't been played in so long. I do I do feel like I do feel like major DCs like could have been played more, especially when healing was OP, especially when like Typhons was OP. And it didn't get nerfed, by the way, until very, very recently with the healing changes, I think. Roller was OP. You could, you could have played all of and trolling, and this, there's so much work in the early mid game, like win, win the game for your team in like the first 15, 20 minutes. But I don't think people enjoy. People don't enjoy playing magical ADC, so I understand. But yeah, they buffed its uh, base power that helps them a lot in the early game and just in general, you know. Uh, two more damage early game though is is a pretty, pretty significant. And you know more crit. I don't know. I don't know why the the crit damage increased. Uh, I think that's just passive. If I'm not mistaken. I don't know names of abilities to be honest, but I'm pretty sure that's just passive. Let's just assume it's just passive. Let's yes, assume I'm right and say, oh my god, this guy is so smart. Thank you. Oh my god, yes, yes. Oh, thank. Wait. Hmm. Okay. So that helps if like people get shelled and then you hit them and you don't. You know, you don't take the the passive gets removed, but they don't take the damage. Peace power scaling, no, 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 wrong buffs, man. Sirket can't be an assassin. I swear, she cannot be an assassin. She can't be a glass cannon assassin. It doesn't work. The kit isn't designed for that anymore. A long time ago, you could do that. Actually, no, you didn't. Even a long time ago, people didn't play like that. They built Jotun Spirit Robe, and that's how you play the character. She's she's a hybrid character. She can't be played. As a full damage assassin, so buffing her like that doesn't make sense. Change her three, please. Change to catch three. It's so bad. It is so outdated. You can't have an ability like that on assassin where you can just get interrupted so easily by everything. The stealth mechanic is cool. Find another way to implement it. You can't just have that delay, in my opinion, on a jump. Like if I could use that in combat, I c it could be so much better. But the amount of times I have died because I've gotten knocked, at least making like knock up immune or something like. This, but I guess that would make it really strong. I, I don't think it would. Buff Circuit, please. She's one of my favorite characters, and she's sucked for a long time. Like, I think she's sucked for, like, two years. People played every once in a while because people forgot how to play against her, and they start getting picked, so she gets played a little bit more. The god sucks. Full stop. If you win with it, you're insane at the game. There you go. Weird Savannah's buff, giving him more damage early game. Uh, I don't know why. I guess it, I guess they felt like his pressure. He's supposed to be like a pressure pick, and he wasn't that good at pressure. So trying to make him, you know, excel at that. I could also read what they say. Um, yeah, they are just buffing his lane. That's all. Uh, also, yeah, his one had a really low scaling for whatever reason. Like thirty five percent was so low. So I'm glad they buffing a little. Maybe making Savan solo full damage a little bit more viable. Who knows. I don't think that 15% does that much, but, you know, I mean, they can't really bring it to, like, 80. That would be just stupid, right? But, yeah, that's just... It's basically just trying to buff his laning phase with this. This is the main thing to look at here, which is a pretty big buff. Three damage is big, especially when you're hitting the whole three archers and, like, three melees with the support, potentially, or the archers with the hunter. Like, it's a lot of added damage to the in the laning phase. That's a pretty good buff, yeah. Yeah, man, I wouldn't even pretend to know anything about this god. I, I literally won't. I should go read, like, look at the character properly. I know this is dumb, because I should, but I just haven't had time to actually look at it. 
Like, I understand what she does, but I don't know names of abilities and I don't know numbers, so I'm not gonna pretend that I know what this is. I'm sorry. I, I won't I won't lie to you guys. I don't know anything about Tiamat. I'll I'll I should have probably looked at it before this. I'll go look next time there's a Tiamat change, I'll promise I will know exactly what it is. But not right now. Uh they buffed Strong Queen, hmm. I mean, sure, this is one, right? Yeah, this is one. I mean, that's a pretty big buff, actually. I feel like 100% on his one is pretty insane. When you think about it, like... Wait, no. Is this two? Or is one? Okay, so the card... I think that's just two. I think his one was already, like, 100%. Or was it 80? You know, this is why... Gods, I'm so bad like at knowing abilities and stuff. I think everyone is to be honest. Uh, so what do you, okay, this is one. I was right. Okay, okay, okay. This is one. But I also didn't know items, so yeah, yeah. Bear with me. Thank you guys for not uh, BMing me in the comments, right? Right? Don't don't do it. Okay. Yeah, this one. That's actually a pretty big buff though, because that that's uh, that's uh, ability is so easy to hit. So like. The poke you have late game is so much more. It's also the thing you did the least damage with technically, like in an actual fight because you use your two to like proc it early. Uh, Jonkui, maybe Jonkui gets played a little bit more. He hasn't been played in so long. The people, like, when's the last time he's been played in an SPL game? I I can't even. I don't even know. Like, I I I'm not even on top of my head. I usually know like when characters have been played. John Kui, I can't even tell. Like maybe someone played him in mid. Maybe Wolfie played him in mid or some point or something. Maybe finally played him in solo. I actually have no idea. But he hasn't been played in ages, so you know a little buff. Uh, no one likes playing against him. So as soon as he gets start being played, he will get nerfed. Just so you know. But you know, that's okay. I don't mind it that much. Okay, let's get into Gilgamesh. 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 Okay. Um, his passive. Uh, at level 5 and 10, Gilgamesh gains a quest, and the first quest is to visit a specific part of the map, and the second quest is to defeat half of the enemy team in a single fight. I don't think he has to be there. I think he just has to happen if there's three kills at the same time. Okay, not at the same time, like, in the same... Like, three people dead at the same time, I think. That's what this means. So, as a pretty cool, unique passive. It doesn't help him at all, like, in combat. It's just a thing that happens. Throughout the game, they build a little bit like Nike, I guess. That's fine. Uh, he he's a warrior, by the way. I'm pretty sure. Uh, just looking at his kit, like I didn't actually see if he was a warrior, but I'm pretty sure he is a warrior. So, his 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 one might be like, okay, I was gonna say his best ability, but I think it's what they will start nerfing the most if it's OP. I'll explain why. Okay, so Gilgamesh. His one is a stim, which is basically like he buffs his auto attacks. So it's a bit like Erlang, but not really. Erlang does like bonus damage with his one, and that's it. Like he just does bonus damage on every auto attack. Uh, the way the way Gilgamesh auto attacks works, uh, he when he starts autoing, they're slowed, and then every time he auto, the cooldown doesn't like go down. Like he gains time on his cooldown every auto attack. So technically, he could have permanent uptime on this ability. And every auto deals like base damage and 3.5% of your maximum health to enemies. That's why this might be really good. You know, Erlang doesn't even have that, and I felt like he was super strong. If Erlang had that, he kind of has it like on a. Like, he has it like a Kins on his passive, kind of like a mini Kins even. I feel like this might be even stronger because he can just build full tank and you'd have that. It's, a little, it's basically like animosity, right? But it's. But instead of uh, magical damage, it will be physical in this situation. So if you build animosity and this item, he like I'm sure the other frost or genetic is gonna play this god in support and go animosity might and with the one and just run around trying to kill everyone really. Uh, that would be exciting to see. I don't know if he's gonna be good in support, but I'm sure people can try to make it work. Cause you know he's a warrior and you want to play him in support because guardians are more boring. So I'm gonna show you what the item looks like. I think it's this one. I just made sure to like include them. Enemies so you see. I'm gonna mute though because you know I don't want to have that. So you know, stem uses the one. Uh, I I actually think, am I wrong? Is the is the ability damage on his circle? Okay, I probably should have went so far back. 
Um, I think the the damage on ability is from like the circle when he actually activates his one. It is what I'm guessing. I could probably just read and figure it out. Okay, they didn't show. Uh, let's just close this so I don't like accidentally tap back into it. Okay, I see one. Yeah, it, the damage here is when you activate the ability is the damage around you, and then you basically just do bonus damage. Also, it looks like it has longer range, but I, it doesn't say anything here about having longer range, so I don't think it does. Uh, but you can have permanent uptime on this ability because you can see you can have it up for a maximum of 12 seconds if you keep autoing, and the cooldown is 14 and 10. So even at, even at rank 1, you could kind of almost have it permanent uptime on it. Like, you don't need permanent uptime, but, you know, once you get here, you know, it's pretty, pretty easy. Um, also, this slows on as every auto attack. Because I kind of might have fucked that up. It's only when he uses his one at the start. Because that would be really fucking annoying if he just has permanent frostbound on his one. If he should also have permanent frostbound because he has permanent uptime on the one. His two is probably his coolest ability. If you've played League, he's ba it's basically like Lee Sin's kick, his ult, but with like added effects. So um, the way it works is like if you hit a wall, you're stunned, and if you hit someone else, you're also stunned. It's, it's like Kumba one, I guess, technically. I'll show you what it looks like, because I think it's like kind of hard to explain. But it's a lot of damage. There's kick damage, bonus damage, and burst damage. So I'll show you what it looks like first. Uh, I think it's this one. So mm. not only does this just oh, make... Oops, oops. Too loud, too loud. Did I already miss it? Yeah, okay. So you see what it looks like? It's a little bit of a charge up, and then you kind of kick them. It's does a, It's gonna be super. This is gonna be like his main, uh, fighting ability in lane, like because you know if you go through the minions you will take damage a little bit like Kazembu three, so, and it does damage to the minions as well. Like it does damage to like the person and the minions. And if you hit a god, walking like if you push a a god through another god. Both gods get stunned, which is going to be like super strong if you ever get to like the carries and you push one of them into the other, you know, that will get to be like, why didn't you beat? You killed me. People are going to start raging. Okay, let's not spoil the ult or the jump, I mean. Now you spoiled that both of them are circles. Um, but yeah, so let's see like, what the actual damage looks like. What's the most damage? So, uh, launch enemies take bonus damage when they get menu or take burst damage and, st and stun if any go to a wall. So, you do the base, the damage from the actual kick, and then if you hit a minion or a god, you do the bonus damage. If the launch enemy hits the winds of Samash, which is his ult, I'm pretty sure, they take more damage. So it's like the burst damage, I'm pretty sure, right? Oh, wait, no. Oh, so the bonus damage from the minions and the burst damage... Okay, okay, never mind. Uh, the other thing is like just a mechanic with his ult. So kick damage, and then there is an extra damage. Uh, so technically, so I think if you if there's an if there's an Odin in the wave, and there is an Amaterasu, so like at the end of the wave, the Odin would take the damage from the kick, the da bonus damage from the minions, and the burst damage from the Amaterasu. So that's not gonna happen that often. So much in your lane that you could have so much burst damage is what I'm guessing. I, I don't see a reason why they wouldn't stack up. So obviously the bonus damage is less than the burst damage because you know you don't want to have it too strong in lane. Does this tack though? Wait, wait, wait. I need to know. Wait, did only the minions? Oh, okay. Okay, I, I, I'm almost confused. Okay, no, no, it's like I said. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I don't know how many. Like, would the minions stack up? Probably not. I'm, I'm assuming you take damage from only one minion, because that would be broken otherwise. Imagine, like, getting pushed and taking 85 times 6. Like, that that would be too OP. So I'm assuming it's just one bonus damage. Even if you hit, like, multiple minions. So, yeah, that would make sense. So I guess it's the same with burst. You only get one of them. That's cool. Stun is pretty long, by the way. 1.5 second is pretty long. So, like, you, I think what's going to end up happening most of the time... I think it's too slow that you could blink on a carry and like push them back. Like in 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 league with Lee Sin, like he could do it super fast if you flash and ult and push kick them back. This one is a bit too slow. It has a charge up as well. Then people will CC or like just jump out and stuff like that. I think the most common application will be like in the middle of a fight you could kind of just use it. Like you won't blink use it, but in the middle of a fight you could use it on the carries. Or you could actually use it on the tanks. You could send the tanks to the to the 
the carries and they end up getting stunned. I don't think it's like that hard to do really. Like, and you don't really want to beat that because you know it's a, it's a range CC technically. But it's a pretty, it's a super interesting ability and it's really cool and I'm glad it's in the game. I I, I love abilities like that. So, um, yeah, I kind of butchered the explanation there, but you guys saw what it looks like, so it'll be a bit easier there. Uh, and the three is basically a jump. He Gilgamesh leaps in the air, crashing down the target location, aims around the impact, take damage. It's a pretty big area. You'll, you'll end up seeing it. And then he causes a beacon to appear for five seconds after he lands. Allies who run towards the beacon will gain movement speed. Having how how do you say this word? Can you actually let me know? I actually don't know how to say it. Having having. <laughs> Once they enter the beacon, allies who enter the beacon will gain bonus life steal. Boosted by 15% of Gilgamesh's highest protection. So that is physical or magical. Most of the time, like 90% of the time, it will be physical. Um, that's pretty cool. They never had something like that in Smite. Um, so is it base 10% and then plus 15% of his highest protection? Is that what this means? Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's cool. A lot of movement speed. A lot of movement speed. It's uh, kind of crazy. Uh, how long does it last though? Like how long does it stay on the ground like the beacon? Uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Um, but when you land, you see it's a jump and then there's like the beacon thing. I want to see like, okay. Oh, it doesn't last that long. It lasts like four seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, five seconds. It's not bad. So it's going to be a great, like, it's going to be a great chase ability. Like if you end up chasing people in a fight, that'll be one of the best abilities. Like a jump, it's like... Having like Cooper 3, Yanis 3, like it's a chase ability, isn't it? It's a jump, and then you also get movement speed. So, not a lot of, not a lot of abilities have that. It's like best stats one, like where you jump and then you get, you have movement speed after that. It's not exactly how it works, but kind of the same concept, but just for your allies instead. His ult is probably like, it synergizes really well with this kit, specifically the two, obviously, and the three a little bit, but not really, like just because they're both circles, but, um, it's pretty complicated. It's a lot. You can see a lot of numbers, but there's initial damage. There's a dot damage, and there's like end damage. It's not that much. And the end damage, you'll see what it looks like. So this is what the ability looks like. Um, it's a big circle, a little bit, a little bit like Katie's ult, I guess. Um, it is really hard to walk out of. You can see really hard. Like a lot of the times, you can end up having to beast his ability. If you're like, like if you're playing like a posh and you get hit by his ability, he's gonna have to beast. If you can't jump out, you you're so fucked, right? Uh, it's gonna be super annoying for supports. Like, dude, you actually just can't walk. It's just you're permanently stunned. If you if you get to the edge anyways and try to get out. So what's cool about this ability? So you can see, I want to see, I want to, yeah, you see, there's the the burst damage at the start. There's the wind damage, which is the dot. What's really cool about this ability? If any time Gilgamesh hits anyone in the ult. They get pushed back to the center. Also, you can see the end damage there. At the end, there's also some burst damage. But this is the coolest thing about the ability. If you end up doing someone, they hit the edge of the ring and they get bounced back. So, like, if someone's about to get out of this ability, you just use your two on them. They're not gonna like walk through the 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 ring. They're just gonna bounce back right at you. This is such a good control ability in team fights, and it might be one of the best warrior ability ults in the game. I compare this to like Bologna ult. I know Bologna ult gives power and the, like but like you know the utility of this of this ability is so insane and i think at the end it also ends up crippling and uh, rooting uh let me just read quickly uh mm, also the slow only slowed at the edge of the ring you know there's like you can kind of see it there's like when you get really close to the edge you start getting slowed before that you're just you're, just, you're chilling um but but you see how big of the slow it is like 70 percent is kind of crazy Oh, okay. The wind turns into a threat over six sand, damaging rooting complete enemies who are still inside the ring. So if you're still inside the ring at the end, you get rooted and crippled, and you take the burst damage at the end, which is the most damage you take, by the way. This god is going to be super fun to play, obviously. An ult and, and the two just make him super fun to play. The one makes him, like, boring because it's not much thought about it, but you can have really cool, like, build, like uh, builds with it and ideas. So that's kind of cool. His three is boring. Uh, to be honest, I, it's just his twos and alt are so fun together, and individually, he's gonna be a great soul laner in my opinion. I I could be wrong, but I think he's gonna be a great soul laner. Looks like he can trade. He's pretty safe. He has a jump. Kind of ungankable if you ever use your alt on yourself. Like you can't really like if you just, you just walk through it, then it's really hard to end up chasing him down. Uh, should have good trades with his two. 
and the one like should make him win lanes is that he builds more items, kind of. Jungle, I don't know. Can he clear? Like, I don't know how he could clear with this too, because he can't really push gods like through the mains. I think that's kind of the way, main way he clears. And I doubt the three does enough damage that he can max it. Not really. I don't think he can jungle. Unfortunately, I just I just don't see. It. It's just gonna be too hard. You're gonna have to build like golden blade or something. So I think he's. I will try to make him work, obviously. I don't think he can jungle. Uh, his one doesn't do, like, none, none of his abilities do enough damage, they can use it to clear. And you don't, building Golden Blade, like, if you have to build Golden Blade on a character, they gotta be fucking OP, otherwise there's no point trying to make him work in jungle, so. I think it's just better off taking him in jungle, in solo, potentially support, I could see animosity builds being super OP. That item is super OP if you can make it work, but no one has made it work so far, but that item is OP, that, Item is so good, especially when you add it with his one. He will be played in solo like 90% of the time though. And then you have the sub support to try to make it work. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I know I tried to not make it as long. Maybe I talk a little bit too fast. This was a bit scuffed, I know. I will really will try to make things more organized and nice in the future. But I'm just busy now trying to catch up on stuff. Uh, hopefully, like, I would say in two weeks, maybe I'll have everything sorted. I'll do more content. I, I have a lot of ideas I want to make, but I don't have the time to, like, even if I make a video, I don't have time to edit it. I really don't. I barely have enough time to do thumbnails. I do thumbnails in lectures and, like, before I go to sleep. So, I, I'm doing this at 1 a.m. right now, So because I need to go to sleep after this. I had a long day. But thank you guys for watching. Uh, rambling a lot. I love you. I appreciate all... You know, people who watch my videos and all the support. And uh, I'll see you guys in another video. Goodbye.